Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Kofi. <laughs> Howdy, I'm Cat. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sabrina, the teenage witch. <laughs> and welcome to the Couch Potato Lab, where we, I mean, I'm, I mean, I bring the science to you. Today's going to be a great episode because I guess it's a one-man show. Um, great. So make sure that you're tuning along with me because I'm a little bit lonely. Um, our I'm sorry. Um, so hi, my name is Kat. My pronouns are she, her. And a fun fact about me, well, my favorite class in high school was AP Calculus. Calculus? Really? What is that? Is that like... Science? Math? It's Physics? actually math. It's oh. really fun math. It's kind of hard, but I had a great teacher, and so I really enjoyed it. Nice. All right. So... Before we begin today, we would like to take a moment to acknowledge that this live stream, as well as Eyes as an organization, operates from Treaty 4 land, the traditional territory of the Neowak, Nakaway, Dakota, Nakota, and Lakota peoples, as well as the traditional homeland of the... Métis uh, Michif Nation. We are very grateful to share this space with these people and recognize that our diverse audience may be watching from various numbered treaties or other treaties between the Crown and the sovereign Indigenous nations or from unceded territory. We thank you for taking a moment with us to recognize this and for joining us here today. I thank you, Kat. But um, I need to ask both of you, um, why you were late? A little, a little late. Um, we already started the show, and I was alone. Colby, I'm was sorry. Really like, sad. I, like I said, <laughs> it was like raining so much. Like the raindrops were th this big. If you can see that, they Marvel were huge. sized. Oh. And I was trying to drive here, but I wanted to be safe, so I drove a little slower. And then when I was running in here, it was windy, and my umbrella kind of got. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I should have planned more accordingly, but it was just the weather. Oh, at least you're safe now, so I'm glad you can join me. Um, Kat, what's your excuse? I'm so sorry, Kobe. <laughs> it was blizzarding outside. I mean, I couldn't see a thing. My my car was covered in snow. It was covered in like 20 feet of snow that I had to shovel off all by myself, and then my car got stuck on the road, and <laughs> I had to dig myself out again, and I'm so sorry that I'm late. I won't do it again, I promise. Oh my gosh, you where know, were you? Like... <laughs> I'm really sorry, but I'm also like super thankful that I had this jacket because I would be soaking wet. Like my hair is still pretty dry and my clothes are. So like this jacket was like pretty rainproof and l the water just kind of bounced off of it. So oh, at least well. I had that. Thank gosh. Well, How about you, Kat? I'm not too happy with my jacket. <laughs> my jacket, like I could feel the wind whipping through my jacket. I could feel the snow soaking me. <laughs> I don't think the insulation in my jacket is very good. Insulation? Insulation. What, do, what does that mean? Insulation. Well, insulation is the process of um, preventing the spread of heat, sound, or electricity from spreading. But today, we're mm. going to focus on heat insulation. So oh, our okay. jackets, did you know they actually have commonly three layers to them? Three layers. Um, can I'm going to guess what those three layers are. I think the first part is probably made out of metal, um, because since it's metal, it's like a protective sheet, and it's gonna like bounce off um, maybe incoming rain pellets or hail, snow storms. Kobe, do you know how heavy metal is? Yes, that I think. <laughs> like I think so. Heavy metal, like rock band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be okay. Maybe it's not like heavy me metal. Maybe it's like a thin sheet of metal that's really, really light. So I think that's the first layer. The second layer is probably made out of cheese because cheese is really good with, um, it has holes. Since it has holes, it's probably going to trap those air particles and those um, heat particles in to keep us warm. And the third layer cat, I believe, is cat fur. Am I right, cat? Okay, so just to be clear, Kobe, <laughs> you think the layers of our jacket um, are heavy metal, yep. cheese, Correct. and cat fur. Yes, I am so smart. Oh my gosh. I am so sorry, Kobe, <laughs> but those are completely wrong. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> yes, there's no uh, no nicer way to say it. It was just it was wrong. Okay, fine, Cat. What are the three layers of a uh, insulated coat? Hmm, Cat. Hmm. Tell me. So the outermost layer, if you can guess it, it's called the outer layer. So. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> yes, fancy. So this layer's job is to prevent wind and moisture from soaking through your jacket. It's pretty simple. But okay. the next layer is called the fill layer. And this layer kind of works similar to insulation that you might see in your house in that its job is to form tiny pockets that will trap warm air. Oh, so it's pretty much like my cheese layer that I proposed or thought of. Um, no, I'm correct. It's it's those yeah it has holes and it traps those heat particles in. Maybe correct? maybe if you said Swiss cheese, <laughs> that'd be pretty close, I guess. <laughs> but the third and final layer is the lining, and this layer's job is to uh, provide heat retention. So that means that as our body naturally uh, ex exerts heat, this layer will help trap that heat and bounce that heat right back into the jacket. Oh, that's actually very, very informative. Thank you, Kat. Um, that's a lot of information, and I think Sabrina knows all of that. So I'm going to test Sabrina right now. Sabrina, pop quiz. Da -na -da -da -na -da. Okay. All right, first question. Actually, the only question I have for you is, what are the three layers of an insulated jacket? Okay, it goes outermost layer, fill layer, and then um, protective layer. But my question is, is where are those layers in my jacket because i see one i see one layer it's one layer oh that's true like that means not all jackets have those three layers right um so why does sabrina's jacket only have like maybe one or two sabrina what do you think well i think that because this jacket is a jacket that i wear when it's like maybe like plus 10 and maybe raining I don't really want to be, I don't need a lot of extra layers in there to make me warm because I'm already warm, maybe? Kat, oh. is that right? Yes, that sounds really great, Sabrina. So it sounds like your jacket, because the weather that it's suited for is nicer weather with maybe, you know, some wind or rain mixed in there, that your jacket probably only has an outer layer and a lining layer. So that means oh. that your jacket wouldn't have that middle layer, that insulating fill. Okay, well that makes sense. Um, I have a question from Orlando. Thank you, Orlando, for um, sending us a question. So remember, you can text in or tweet in questions or fun facts um, during our live stream. So you can text your questions through 306-570-1013 or tweet us with hashtag CouchPotatoLab on our Twitter. Thank you very much. All right, so Orlando asked, um, it's May 11th. Um, w it's not snowing, Kat. What are you talking about? <laughs> where did you come from? <laughs> well, I mean, where I was, it was, it was snowing. <laughs> like, Kat and I travel from different places, so there's... We, we, we live in Saskatchewan. It's not impossible. Exactly. <laughs> Saskatchewan, you can, you can have snow in June. And where I was, there was snow. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so make sure that you uh, download that lab manual um, with the it.ly slash couch potato lab and follow along as we are going to make and engineer an insulated coat. And uh, what are some of the materials that we will need, Kat? So some of the materials that we'll be using here are aluminum foil, wax paper, plastic wrap, we have some scissors and tape. Uh, we also have some feathers, maybe to help make our jacket more stylish. <laughs> um, we also have some foam and cardboard paper. And most important, we have a figurine that we are going to test our jackets out on. Now, these are just the materials that we have here with us. You can use any materials that you have at home with you. Yes. All right. So the reason why we are going to make an um, insulated coat is because Kat and Sabrina, do you want to say it with me? What is the title of our activity? Because baby, it's, it's cold, cold outside. outside. <laughs>
<laughs> Nailed it. All right, so the th next thing is that um, for our activity, I decided to make three different prompts for each one of us because it would kind of get a little bit boring if we were all making the same code. So we have to remember that um, when people engineer the codes, um, they have to think of the different scenarios their customers may be in. For example, um, let's say I'm going to give this prompt to Sabrina. Sabrina, here is your prompt. All right. What does it say? Okay, my prompt is visiting Santa Claus in the North Pole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you'll be uh, making a jacket that an allows you to visit Santa Claus in the North Pole. Are you ready for that? I'm hey, ready for that. Right. I don't know about you, but I heard that Santa is busy 24-7. I don't know if he's accepting <laughs> visitors at this time. <laughs> well, I'm going to find out, and I guess I'm going to be well prepared with my jacket Ooh, maybe when I get Yeah, there. maybe Santa Claus will be like so impressed by your design, um, he's probably going to let you in. Maybe I, I golden think ticket, so. yeah. All right, so Kat, what you're going to be making is here, this beautiful prompt, this one right here. Here you go, Kat. All right, well, it looks like mine says that it's a windy day with light rain, and porcupine needles are coming at me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of uh, climate this happens <laughs> in, <laughs> but we'll see what kind of coat I make to protect my figurine. You might need some it. of that uh, heavy metal that Kobe <laughs> was talking about. Yeah, maybe, maybe Kobe was onto something with that uh, heavy metal reference earlier. All right, so the last prompt is what I have right here. So this last prompt is I'm going to be making a coat where um, my doll will be running a marathon with the sun shining on a nice day. Oh, that sounds beautiful. That <laughs> does sound beautiful. What a surprise. You what get a surprise. <laughs> hey. Nice weather for yourself. Oh, yeah. So um, what are we going to do today with um, these prompts and these materials, um, Sabrina? Well, I think we are going to design the best coat that we see fit for our scenario. So I think for mine, since I am going to the North Pole, I am going to have to use the three layers that Kat was talking about, the outer shell, the uh, lining, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to put a lot of lining in there so <laughs> I don't get too cold. And then the protective layer or lining. I keep forgetting what that third layer is. Lining. 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 Yeah. You nailed it. You got it. Kobe, I think yours is going to be hard, even though <laughs> you have nice weather. You know what? I'm going to nail this. And I think I think. <laughs> <I'm gonna laughs> Maybe five to seven minutes. Um, do you think that's enough time? Yep. All that right, perfect. Good. Okay. Ready? Get set. Cool. Okay. Um, um, I'm just thinking. My inside right. layer needs to keep the heat in, right? Yeah. So, uh, Serena, talk us through what um, your idea and what your general plan is for your insulated coat. Okay. I was gonna put tape on the inside, but I think tape will be good on the out. Actually, I'm going to put tinfoil as my first layer because I feel like tinfoil is going to keep the heat in a lot. I was going to use tape, but I feel like maybe tape isn't really that great of an idea and super restricting. And I don't want to be restrictive when I'm traveling. Um, that's not what I want to do. So okay, I'm going to wrap my good. Barbie in some tinfoil. I see Kat is also wrapping her Barbie in tinfoil. Wow, even though we have too. different <laughs> We have different uh, coats. All right, so besides the tinfoil you're going to use, um, what other materials will you be using to represent the outer layer and the fill, the fill layer? I think this foam looks like a really great choice Ooh. to fill the layer because it's really like fluffy and I feel like I can probably stuff a lot in my coat by like crushing it up and putting it in there. And then maybe like plastic wrap on the outside because I feel like plastic is going to be really good at um, stopping the rain or the snow, whatever kind of weather I come into contact with, I feel like it'll just bounce right off. Yeah, I think you're just going to get a whole bunch of snow in the North Pole. Do you? Yeah, maybe maybe um, some penguins will be um, falling from the sky and you're gonna ha your coat has to protect you from those falling penguins. Falling penguins. Falling penguins. Do they fly? 
No. I no, don't of course so. not. <laughs> Never mind. The only bird they that jump. does not fly. Maybe they can <laughs> jump. Jumpsters. All right, cat. So, what are you? What is your um, plan for your Barbie doll and your jacket? Well, since the prompt I got sounds like <laughs> some kind of apocalyptic <laughs> rage is going on in the world, I've decided that I am going to have to take a pretty aggressive approach to how I create my jacket. And I'm probably going to create uh, a full suit, seeing as there are. Porcupine needles coming at my <laughs> figurine, which we will need to protect her from. So I'm going to start off with that um, lining layer. Uh, the aluminum foil seems best because I know um, when we talk about NASA and those space blankets later on, this will make more sense uh, to, you know, like I said, bounce that heat back. Next, I'm definitely going to have to use some foam to keep uh, her a bit warm. It doesn't sound like it's too cold outside, but just a little bit. And then I think I might have to put some of that heavy metal <laughs> on the outside as armor against these porcupine needles to finish things off. That's my plan right now. All right. That sounds good. All right. So remember that um, you can text in and tweet in um, maybe what you're designing. Um, maybe did you have, maybe ask someone to think of a scenario for you to challenge yourself. Hey, so maybe um, you can grab your sibling and they might say, it's going to be a blazing hot day with a chance of a raining cats and dogs. So you're going to have to build a jacket that protects you from those falling cats and dogs. Ooh, I don't know. Um, so remember texting your pictures and tweeting your pictures. We love to see them so we can retweet them and show the world um, your amazing engineering skills. All right, so Kat and Sabrina already described their plan. My plan is to kind of like what Kat was talking about with the space blanket, I'm going to use just aluminum foil. So I know that aluminum foil like reflects, like wh um, what Kat already said, it reflects light and reflects heat. So uh, since it's going to be a hot, sunny day, um, I want that um, reflective material to reflect the heat so that um, our model stays um, cool inside. So that is my plan. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use any other materials, but I'm going to keep wrapping it with um, aluminum foil. Yeah, so that's my plan. Sabrina, um, you look like your your bar your um, doll looks real good. Your jacket Thank looks you. fantastic. She <laughs> is going to stay pretty warm, I feel like. All right, so what are you putting on there? What is that representing? This is my surround wrap to keep out all of the wind and the rain. I feel like, I think plastic is a pretty good, like, rain repellent or w water resistant so that's what i'm using on the outside because if it can't get wet if the insulation isn't going to get wet then it'll still work but if you put something on the outside and the insulation gets wet i feel like it's probably not going to do its job right oh right? i see all right i got a really good question um from one of our viewers um does anyone know why we shiver when we are outside so if it gets really cold, why do we why do we move so much and shiver? So this is actually your body's reaction to being cold. So your body knows that it's getting cold, and by shivering, it's activating a bunch of muscles in your body to try and produce heat. And so that's why we shiver in oh. response to cold, and our body's trying to produce heat. How about the opposite? So what if outside is like burning hot, the sun is blazing, um, how does our body respond to um, really hot weather? Sabrina, do you know by chance? Um, well, I think it's our way of our body's way of trying to cool us off because when we sweat, then we are getting like more moisture on our body ah. and that'll cool us off. I'm not exactly sure if there's more to that or not. Do you know, Kobe? I think you're right. I think because while we sweat, um, our body heats up and it releases all those water droplets. And when they evaporate, that kind of causes like a cooling sensation for our body um, so that we cool down and get our body temperature back to its like regular body temperature. And Kat, since you're a nurse, do you know what the body temperature of like everybody is? Like what is our normal body temperature? You know, different resources will have uh, different numbers for this, but what I've learned in school is about 36.5 degrees Celsius to 37.3 degrees oh my gosh. Celsius. That's pretty oh. uh, accurate or precise. But that also varies depending on, you know, if you're five years old versus 11 years old versus one month old. <laughs> cool. 
So, so if we're a baby, do we have a higher body temperature, or if we're really a senior, are we going to have a higher body temperature? Do you know by chance, Cat? I'm trying to remember. I was on the uh, uh, labor and delivery unit back in January and February. I can't remember off the top of my head the the temperature for a newborn baby. We'd have to look into that. All right. Thank you, though. All right, so how are we doing with the Barbies? Almost I'm done here. Yeah, my doll, my jacket's pretty good. Um, it looks beautiful. I, I think e I even have a name for it, so I'm ready for this um, doll uh, fashion show, which is going to be super great. Um, oh, I got another good question. Um, so we were talking about insulation. Does anyone know what the op what the opposite of an uh, insulator is? Anybody? Ooh, opposite of an insulator. Yeah. I think that would be like a conductor, right? So if insulators are the things that keep heat out, conductors are the things that allow heat to go through them, which I think, Kobe, actually metal is a conductor. So that might not be a great choice <laughs> in a jacket if you're trying to stay warm because uh, metal will let heat go through it. So. Oh. And I know that like there's a lot of insulation around like in our homes and stuff like that. Is that true, Sabrina? Yeah, is, yeah. so for sure in our homes. And we're going to talk about the different types of insulation that you might see in your homes a bit later. But um, your homes definitely have insulation. So in the cold months and even actually the warm months, it just stops like the cool or warm air from escaping to keep your house temperature more regulated. So we're not constantly hearing our furnaces cut in and it just makes heating our homes more efficient with the insulation. Oh. So is that why my dad gets mad <laughs> when we have the heat on and I open my bedroom window? That sure is, Kat, because uh. you are making the furnace work harder than it needs to. All uh, <laughs> right. So like insulation is important for like, I guess, saving money so we can keep that hot air in our homes you bet. and we don't have to rely on the furnace, furnace as much. Okay, that makes more sense. Thanks, Sabrina. Yeah. Or, um, I'm. I think I'm done. I am almost done. You're Very done. Close. So maybe I'll say one more minute. Okay. And in that one minute, I'm going to ask Sabrina. Sabrina. Yes. Sab since Sabrina is our local chemist, <laughs> um, she does a whole bunch of different chemicals. So what is the biggest reaction you've ever did? Oh my goodness. I think the biggest reaction I've ever done was actually elephant's toothpaste. So <gasps> if you go back a few episodes, you'll see elephant's toothpaste. But when you are a chemist, you have access to some different chemicals that are a little bit stronger. So they make the explosion a lot bigger. And so that's super fun to work with. And the explosions get as big as hitting the roof. So it's very fun. Ooh, ooh. I remember that our elephant's toothpaste was actually to um, make sure that our in-studio elephant, Effie, we're trying to keep her breath um, clean and fresh because she likes to talk to us a lot. So that's why we made uh, a whole bulk of elephant's toothpaste. So make sure you check out that episode. All right, I'm done. Look at this beautiful Barbie um, and this beautiful jacket I've uh, made. Um, cat, how stores. <laughs> how about we check out Sabrina first? <laughs> okay. Check out Sabrina. <laughs> Let's, let me show you my beautiful design. As you can see first, the Barbie's head is covered because it's cold outside. Yeah. So she has a lovely toque on and a lovely mask to keep herself warm. Now her ears looks like this toque doesn't quite fit. This is a farmer's toque is what they call it because farmers never cover their ears with their toques. It's a true story. Um, <laughs> but this is, that's her face. So then for the jacket, <laughs> I have the plastic wrap on the outside covering her whole body. Now you might think she's not able to walk with the way that I've done this, and you might be right, <laughs> but <laughs> we are working with what we got. So we have plastic, and then you can see the red insulation. I chose the um, foam for insulation to keep her heat inside. And finally, you can see poking out the inside layer is tin foil. So hopefully that tin foil re will reflect any heat that her body is trying to give out and just keep it inside on her long trek to the North Pole. Ooh, nicely done. I think Santa Claus would approve of that <laughs> <think so. laughs> of that jacket. So maybe let us know. Did 
um, did um, Sabrina do her coat justice? Will Santa Claus approve of that? Will Santa Claus um, give her the yes stamp or let her in into the elf studio or a workshop? So let us know. Text in your um, answers, questions, tweet in as well. All right, so it is my turn to show you this beautiful um, jacket that I made. So the prompt that I had was, I'm running a marathon with the sun shining on a beautiful sunny day. So, fashion walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, All right. Wow. What <laughs> I call this is the Where Do You See My Reflection Limited Edition. Why? Because this reflects any heat coming at her. Yes, that's right. So when it's super, super hot and really, really sunny, it's all the aluminum foil and reflective material will bounce that heat right back to the air and the atmosphere and the environment. So the doll stays nice and cool. Yeah. So the thing is about for running marathons, um, you sweat, right? You sweat so much and that cooling sensation um, from the evaporation of the sweat um, might make you a little bit cold. So the good thing about this um, reflective material that I've used is that it kind of keeps um, keeps that heat inside um, within um, the jacket. So maybe it's getting cold, you're sweating a lot. Um, this jacket will s make sure that the heat and the convection and all of that stays into the um, Barbie and the jacket, so it stays nice and warm. Yeah. All right, I'm done. Cat, let's see yours. All right, so this is <coughs> my figurine. Just a reminder that my prompt included that it is a windy day with light rain with porcupine <laughs> needles flying at you. <laughs> so I had to take a different approach to this. So I did include that lining layer. So I have a layer of aluminum foil right around the door, the figurine. And then after that, because, you know, it's it's a little windy outside. I have some insulation, so I put one piece of foam around. And then after that, I decided that we would need a heavy metal layer <laughs> to protect <laughs> our figure as there are porcupine needles coming. And that is also why I have the feathers. I'm hoping maybe if there's like if something is shooting the porcupine needles out that this will be a distraction target <laughs> that they'll <laughs> aim for above the head um and then i had to top it off with a layer of saran wrap because there is some light rain occurring <laughs> so we don't want to get wet so that is my uh you know, apocalypse <laughs> jacket. Wow, round of applause. Perfect. All right, so maybe tweet us or text us which jacket would you want to buy? Would you like um, Sabrina's three layered jacket that is ready for the North Pole? My jacket that reflects light and heat only? Or <laughs> cats? apocalyptic jacket ready to defend you from porcupine needles and distract your opponents. Whoa, so text us and tweet us, because that would be great. So um, we got a question from one of our viewers. Thank you so much. Um, Katie, thank you, Katie, for watching. Um, why do we put baked potatoes in tin foil to cook um, if tin foil reflects heat? Hmm, that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. Does anyone know? Yes, because as a potato is baking and the heat gets inside the potato, if we can use that aluminum foil to trap that heat to cook the potato even further so that oh. it keeps the heat around the potato oh. longer. That's so great. how does the heat get in the tin foil? If you know what I mean? Yes, I believe that'd be through like it's either conduction, oh yeah. convection one of those terms that we'd have to look into. The transfers of heat. Yeah. Transfers, transfers of, of heat, heat. Yeah. yes. Okay, That's that makes cool. sense. Oh, okay, so I have, a, I, have a, I have a confession to make, I guess. Um, so you all brought some jackets, mm -hmm. and I didn't bring my jacket today because I kind of outgrown mine, and I'm, I'm all, my jacket's a little too small. Um, any suggestions, Kat, on what I can do? Yes, Kobe. So mm -hmm. maybe you're at home and, you know, especially if you're a kid, right, you outgrow your clothes and your jackets all the time. Well, a great thing that you can do is thrift that jacket or clothing and donate it. 
So lots of times you'll have schools in your community, maybe churches, or here in Regina, we have the Carmichael Outreach that will accept clothing donations um, so that we can redu reduce, reuse, and recycle clothing. Uh, right now, places due to COVID-19 aren't accepting donations, but that's something that you can hang on so that when things open up, you can donate your old clothing items. Oh, wow. That's great to know. Thank you so much, Kat, because like, um, that really helps because I need a new jacket, and I know that there's options for me now. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. So um, there's lots of episodes coming your way because I just want to remind you that we Couch Potato Lab is airing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday every day, every weekday. So make sure that you stick into tomorrow's episode where you're going to see us do a really cool thing um, with um, insulation and a little bit kind of like blubber, 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 blubber. What does that mean? Blubber. 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 Blubber, um, Sabrina, so like, what is Blubber? What do you have a plan for us next? Okay, so today we're going to do a little activity that shows us how insulation works in animals. So we know that there's lots of insulation in our homes and um, in jackets and stuff like that, but animals that live in the cold water actually have their own kind of insulation that's called Blubber. So to test that out today, we are going to use some some um, insulators that we think are gonna help us keep warm. So we're gonna get some cups of cold water, and then I think I'm gonna pick uh, tin foil for my first insulator since we've been talking about how tin foil helps us keep heat in. So what we're gonna do is pick an insulator. Um, I'm gonna pick tin foil. Kat, what are you gonna pick? I'm going to try some plastic wrap for my insulator. Okay. Why plastic wrap, Kat? Because I believe that this will work better than aluminum foil. I believe oh. that Do my you? insulator will work better than Sabrina's. But I guess we'll have to test it out. So your plan is to use plastic wrap and test out um, that sh other thing? What's that called again? The, the, it, the white, yeah. That? Oh, this is uh, shortening. So we will be testing this afterwards. Oh, so, right. Colby, we're going to need your help. You're going to have to time us. So we're going to make this water cold because the ocean water is very cold. And so what we're going to do is one finger is going to be insulated and one is not. And then we're going to put them both in the water to see how long we can hold them in there. Oh, all right. So typically you would think the one that has more mm -hmm. insulation should be able to stay in longer, representing animals that can survive in the cold water. Oh, all right. So let's then. try tin foil, see what happens, tin and foil. saran wrap. All right. Um, so Sabrina's going to use tin foil. Um, Kat's going to use plastic wrap. So I'm going to time, and the timer is ready when you are. So when you guys are ready, please I'm ready let when me you know. are, Kat. All right, Kat. Dun, 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 dun. How many layers are you putting on? Uh, just enough that the my finger is okay. exposed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> How about you? Are you just doing one layer I as well, I think just Sabrina? one layer. Just one? All right. So once you feel cold, I guess, like lift up your finger and then we'll let you know and I'll stop the timer. Okay, and sounds good. And we're what just time. testing our one finger? Yeah, one finger of insulated and one finger not insulated not. to okay. see how different they are. All right. So like probably our non-insulated finger is not going to last very long. We're going to feel cold <laughs> pretty, pretty quick. Pretty quick. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Go. Dinner, 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 dinner. You feeling cold yet? Both mine are feeling cold. I'm not gonna lie. This this one is too cold. Yeah, mine is yeah, like. All right, if it's too cold, lift it up. Uh. I think my finger. Yeah, that's actually too cold too. <laughs> I don't think my tin foil was wrapped very well because I think some water seeped through it. But nonetheless, not All the right, greatest. All right, so that water. means like we're not really equipped or adapted to s like maybe stay in the ocean wa cold ocean water. I know that there are some animals that are well adapted to the dark and really cold ocean water. So I think what they have is something called blubber. And in order to represent that, we have um, shortening, like what Kat um, talked about before. So Kat, what are you going to do with that shortening right there? Why, why does it represent blubber? This will represent blubber because blubber 
is like a really vascular fat that animals have. And so we wanted to try this because this is also a fat. And so we're going to smother this shortening all over our finger and then test this out again. So we'll have one finger covered in the shortening <laughs> and one finger exposed. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. So here's some paper towel just in case you need it. Thank you. Um, so your time that you d got from um, just the aluminum foil and the plastic wrap. Sabrina, you got seven seconds Ooh. and Kat, you got eight seconds. That's not great. Not I'm that not great. Lie. So hopefully this uh, blubber will allow them to withstand um, the coldness and keep their fingers a little bit more warm, right? Um, all right, are you two ready? Nope. Nope. Cat. My finger's looking pretty good. Oh my gosh. Oh, it looks okay. like you bandaged it. Okay, I didn't realize we were using it all. <laughs> 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 all right. Wow, I didn't know um, the shortening was like kind of hard. Like what is it? What is, what is shortening? I think Kat did a good job of covering her finger because yeah. mine is, okay. Well, all we right. read the ingredients list and it sounds like there's a lot of different oils in this shortening. Lots oh. of different types of oils. Oils and fats. Yes. Okay. Okay. Ready? Oh. Ready. All right. I'm just going to wipe off my <laughs> my one finger. So pretty much what they're going to do is stick both one finger um, with the shortening and another finger without the shortening into the water. Um, once they feel coldness, they're going to let me know and I'm going to stop the timer and kind of see and compare the time that they could withstand that cold temperature. All right. On your marks, get set, and go. <gasps> I don't feel anything wow. on my arm. Nothing? My, I, don't I don't feel, feel anything, anything. anything. Nothing at all? No, no. this finger's too yeah, cold. Yeah, my, my. Oh my gosh. I don't feel anything. All right, so so the finger that got out. I can out feel was a little bit. Like it's a chill, but it's not. I ice could leave cold. my finger in this cup all day. <laughs> <laughs> try this out at home. If you have Crisco or any other kind of shortening, try this out just to see how crazy yeah. this feeling is or oh. the lack of feeling. Or yeah. you can also stay tuned for our next episode because we are actually going to do the same experiment um, tomorrow. So this is just a little demo, but tomorrow we're going to talk more about animal adaptation and why um, animals have blubber and where they got it from and why it works under cold water. So nicely done. So the, the time that you got from release holding your bare finger, it was eight seconds. And right now it's still, right now it's 55 seconds Whoa, for the, wow. cr I can for the shortening. I'm starting to feel a little bit of a chill at Me the tip too, of my finger. Me too, but like nothing. I think this experiment worked. Ooh, yeah, I all think right. we proved that this is how animals stay Nice in and warm. the water. All right, perfect. So, so cool. that's so make sure that you tune in for tomorrow's um, episode and we're going to follow through um, with us, follow along with us to do this really, really cool activity called polar bear jacket. So talking about polar bears, there's lots of animals that um, use blubber. Um, stuff like polar bears and cetaceans. The cetaceans are like whales and dolphins. So they also have blubber in order to um, stay warm in the cold depths of the ocean. All right, nicely done. Um, next thing that we're going to do is talk about what types of insulation we know. So I know that um, we have a lot of insulation at home. Sabrina, what are some um, maybe specific types of insulation um, that we have? Yeah, so I know of three types of insulation that I'll talk about today. Um, there's fiberglass, cellulose, and foam. And I actually have two uh, of those types with me today. So this pink looking stuff, it's a little bit dirty, but this pink um, is fiberglass. And so fiberglass is one of the most common types of insulations that we put into our house because it comes in like pre-cut rectangles. It was actually kind of hard to get only a piece of it off because it was so stuck together. And it's actually made up of up to 80% recycled glass. So when it Ooh. says fiberglass, it actually is tiny shards of glass in there. So when you're working with fiberglass, you want to make sure that you're wearing the proper PPE like glasses, um, maybe coveralls and definitely gloves because you don't want to handle this or um, and maybe even a mask because you don't want to inhale it because it irritates your skin, your eyes and all that kind of stuff. And also fiberglass is one of the main types of insulation that um, replaced asbestos, which I'll talk about in a minute. Here's foam insulation. This stuff is also 
kind of in a rectangular shape, but it also comes in a spray bottle. So foam insulation is actually one of the most um, effective insulations, but it's really expensive. So fiberglass is more common. And then cellulose, I don't have an example of, but cellulose is a spray insulation. So it's really easy to get around like ductwork and pipes and stuff. Um, so that's why it's popular for those areas, but it also retains a lot of moisture. So if you retain a lot of moisture in um, insulation, it's not gonna do the job properly and it'll also mold. And so we Ooh, don't want mold inside our houses, nope. let alone in the walls where we maybe can't necessarily see it. So that's why that type of insulation maybe isn't as popular. So you mentioned about asbestos, um, Sabrina. What is asbestos? And I know it's really, really bad now and people are starting to change asbestos out for other um, alternatives. So Sabrina, what is asbestos? Yeah, so asbestos is kind of just like another type of insulation that's a really good heat resistor and insulator. So it was used in insulation uh, lots of years ago because it was just such a good option. But then they started realizing it was causing like cancer in your lungs when you inhale it. So lots of like companies and places are deciding to replace or like take out the insulation with asbestos and replace it with other types but it's actually only dangerous if it's disturbed. So if the insulation is not gonna be moved or the particles aren't gonna come loose, it's um, some people choose to leave it in, but a lot are choosing to take it out and replace it with safer options. Oh, all right, that's really good to yeah. know. Thanks, Sabrina. So I know that um, there's a whole bunch of different insulations. Do you think we use those types of insulations like the foam stuff in our jackets or anything like that? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> these are just for houses because we don't come in contact with them uh, mm. because they go in when you're building a house. So then you put drywall and paint and all sorts of stuff over top of it. Because if you come into contact, that's why I have them in plastic bags. Because if you come into contact with any of this type of insulation, um, it, it's really irritating to your skin. So you definitely don't want to put this in a type of jacket. Oh, oh I got a quick question from Jared. So. Um, Jared asked why sometimes um, when they when they touch the fiberglass it causes skin irritation like what you talked about. Do you understand like why why does it irritate my skin? Is there sp a special like property of this fiberglass insulation that causes me to itch all the time? Well, the only thing that I know is that it's actual tiny shards of glass. So that itself is irritating enough. Um, do you know anything more about that, Kobe? What's mm, in I think it? Yeah, I think I think you were talking about like tiny shards of glass. So maybe like it kind of gets into your s your pores of your skin. Yeah. So that probably irritates it. So good question. Thank you so much, Jared. Remember to text in your questions or tweet in your questions as well if you have any. So I was thinking about different um, insulators that we can use um, for our jackets, right? Um, so Kat, I know that NASA like developed a really cool um, jacket called the space jacket so can you talk a little bit more about that cat yes so as we've been talking about through this episode we've mentioned space blanket a few times well would you have guessed it that the same materials that they've used to send people to the moon that we use here on earth in some of our everyday lives isn't that crazy oh my gosh really yes so the same materials that maybe they've used on the Mars rover, we now use in space blankets or emergency blankets. So these blankets are highly reflective material. You might see them in first aid kits. Uh, in this picture, you can see these are marathon runners using them. And they, uh. like I said, use them on the Mars rover. Oh, so yeah, I think kind of like what how I made my um, um, little jacket right here, it kind of reflects the mirror and kind of represents that space jacket that um, NASA like developed. Yeah, looking good. Nicely done. All right, so the next thing that I want to talk about is my new friend. Um, this is Pepele <laughs> Pandalorium Priyanka Potato Potato. And uh, Potato Potato has a problem that... Wait, wait, Kobe, I didn't catch that name. Can you say <laughs> that name again? Yes, it is Pepele Pandalorium Priyanka Potato Potato. All right, don't wear it out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So um, they have a problem for um, both of you. And they sh um, Potato Potato needs you to put your engineering caps and solve a big problem that, ha that um, this person has, um, this potato has. So maybe grab out your whiteboards right now. And the problem that Potato Potato has been having is that when they use the bathroom, 
sometimes they run out of toilet paper and they don't know what to do. And uh, Potato Potato is ready to splurge all of its savings account and money to buy your next best invention. Ooh. Yes. Mm -hmm. So your prompt is, they ran out of toilet paper and you're sitting on the toilet and you don't know what to do next. <laughs> so <laughs> what are you going to make to solve this problem? So you can play along with us as well. Um, I'm going to have Sabrina and a Kat um, do this really, really fun potato problem. Hmm. Because Priyanka, potato potato, is really, really unhappy and needs a solution right away. So what do you guys think? Um, I have Sabrina? a few questions here. Is mm -hmm. the potato alone in the house? Very important yes. question. Alone? Alone in the is house. Is there extra toilet paper in the house? There is extra toilet paper okay, in the helps. house. Okay. Yes, it's Here honestly how, however you want to interpret it. So what I want is a drawing of your invention that you're going to make. Um, a name for the invention you're going to make and maybe a little slogan if you would like um you're going to pitch your ideas through texting us a picture or and a caption um with three zero six five seven zero one zero one three or of course you can always tweet in your picture and your caption and your invention name um through twitter so that's with hashtag couch potato lab and mention us at eyes youth so that's what Sabrina and Kat are doing right now. I think they, they got their engineering um, lens and hats ready to go. Hopefully they make something really, really cool because Potato and Potato is having a difficult time. So while they are doing that, I'm going to answer some few questions that you guys sent in. So the first one is, do I have blubber? And this is also from Jared, so thank you, Jared, for tuning in and sending us your question. Uh, do you have blubber? No, you don't have blubber. Yes, you do have fat. Everyone does have fat, but blubber and fat is a little bit different. So the difference between um, blubber and fat is that blubber is a little bit more dense, and it has a lot of um, blood vessels around it that allows for the burning of like all the fat storage into energy, and that energy is kind of like heat that is diffusing into the blood vessel that allows them to warm up lot easier and the fun fact is that 50% of like whales and um, uh, dolphins their weight 50% of their weight is made of that blubber material which is like crazy but that allows them to stay warm when they're deep under the depths of the ocean so thank you for sending your question um, it looks like Sabrina is ready to go cat <coughs> I'm going to give you maybe like 30 more seconds while I answer the next question um, cold-blooded versus warm-blooded. What's the difference? Like, um, how do they keep warm between cold-blooded and warm-blooded animals? Sabrina, do you know the answer to this? Um, so cold-blooded animals don't need blubber or fat or anything because the temperature change doesn't affect them as much as warm-blooded animals who need to keep that internal body temperature higher. Whereas cold-blooded animals, their body temperature is normally lower, which I'm not sure what that would be, but um, for warm-blooded animals, they need that to keep their bodies warm. Oh, so I think um, cold-blooded animal, like what you said, relies more on the environment. So when it's like really, really sunny and they're cold, they're gonna move towards the sun. But if they're like super hot, they're gonna like move away from the sun. And then I know warm-blooded animals have some variety of different stuff. They don't have blubber. What else do they have, Sabrina? Oh yeah, I guess warm-blooded animals might have other insulations like fur on like land animals. And so if you think of like a dog in the winter, their hair might get thicker or longer in the winter months to help protect them. Oh, okay. That's like my dog. My dog is super, super puffy. <laughs> Looks like a marshmallow. Yeah, and now <laughs> since it's dog. getting warmer out, they're going to start shedding a lot more. Yeah, maybe I should give them a shave. Give <laughs> them a brush. <laughs> All right, so that is the end of our potato potato um, problem. Um, so this is the brainstorming that is finished. So I'm going to have Kat and Sabrina pitch their ideas to Pepele, Pandalorium, Priyanka, potato potato. <laughs> Let's start with Kat. What have you decided? What have you invented um, and to sell um, potato potato? Well, Pepelo. Pandalorium, Priyanka, Potato Potato. 
I have created <laughs> the emergency <laughs> TP rescue super mega awesome 5,000 string. <laughs> So the way that this works is, oh my goodness, you're in your house and you realize you have no toilet paper. You don't care because you have the emergency TP rescue super make awesome 5000 <laughs> string already equipped in your bathroom. So when you pull this string in your bathroom, immediately a giant helium balloon and confetti <laughs> release out of the chimney of your house and the balloon will state, I need toilet paper. And it will just rotate around your house. And then uh, the rescue squad at their base <laughs> will come and they will send a drone because we're <laughs> practicing our social distancing. So the drone will Ooh. come, drop it off, uh, uh, and then it will make a cut through the front door, and, or go, it will go through your doggy door, and it will sneak through the doggy door, and as a, then it will drop it off right outside your bathroom for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that, that is amazing! Is well wow, done. potato potato, do you do you like that? Oh, oh they won't answer. Okay, <laughs> then. <laughs> All right, Sabrina, what have you invented? All right, mine is called the TP catching machine. No TP is out of reach. So, <coughs> similar to Cat's idea, there is going to be a string. But this string is going to be built into the house, so you don't even have to worry about any extra thing. So this string is going to be attached wherever you want your toilet paper. So here's a little closet with the toilet paper. And when you're in the toilet here, so <laughs> this is the toilet and you're just, all is good. But when you're out of toilet paper, this toilet paper is going to reach and it's going to go through your vents, maybe through the insulation of your house, I don't know. Oh. And all the way down, drop through the ceiling right into your lap. Wow, nicely done. Round of applause for uh, both Kat and I Sabrina. I just have to say, Papalo, in our first six months of <laughs> operation, we have had a uh, <laughs> marginal increase in sales. <laughs> we are asking for a... a uh, we're asking for a 25% stake <gasps> in our company. Um, <laughs> that is my offer. Ooh, uh, uh, Sabrina, do you have a better gosh. offer? Okay, well, my has been tested for probably four years and it has been successful. We've not seen a lot of increase in sales <laughs> yet, but I will ask for 20% stake. Ooh, that's less. Potato, potato, what do you think? Uh, potato, potato, I also have to say that I do have offers coming in from <laughs> Brett, the broccoli head, who's <laughs> also interested in the emergency TP Rescue Super Mega Awesome 5000 string. Ah, okay, all right. Um, <laughs> potato, potato, what are you gonna do? Oh, okay. So Potato Potato has decided that there sh um, it needs your input. So what do you think? Should they go with Sabrina's design? What's it called again? Um, TP Catching Machine. No TP is out of reach. Or should they go with Cat's design? What's your name? The uh, Emergency TP Rescue Super Mega <laughs> Awesome 5000 String. All right, so tweet in or text in what, which, one, which invention Potato Potato should use. All right, thank you so much. I would also like to mention that mine is voice activated. And if you can <gasps> see here, my person on the toilet is saying, Cat, I'm out of TP again. So you can personalize it to whatever name you would like to say when you need TP. I chose Cat. And I would like to say <laughs> that 10% of all of our <laughs> profits will be going towards making sure that you never run out of TP again. <laughs> okay. So for today's uh, potato pr problem, make sure you send in your designs um, and titles of your invention. I want to see if your designs are better than these two. All right. So like text in which one they, um, potato potato should buy. Should it be Sabrina's or should it be Kat's? Or is yours better? So tweet us. Um, thank you so much for this potato pr problem. All right. Uh, lastly, I have a question from our audience. So remember to text in your questions as well. We love to answer them. Very good. So are there any um, food or experiments that we can do with um, aluminum foil since it's really reflective? Any ideas? Because it reflects heat, it can like heat up some things. So what are some types of food that we can cook outside? Any ideas? Well, definitely baked potatoes you can throw on like over top of a fire or a barbecue, wrap them up in tin foil. I know you can do that with vegetables. Maybe you should try marshmallows. See what happens to a marshmallow. Marshmallows? 
Yeah. Kat, what do you think? I think I know when it's been really hot outside, I see people crack an egg into some tinfoil oh. and watch the sun bake that on their tinfoil. Crack an egg? Yes. So I can cook eggs outside with a tinfoil. Yes. Maybe wait until it's like 30 degrees Celsius 30 degrees Celsius. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe we're making some like scrambled eggs, some bacon. <gasps> bacon! Oh, wow. Oh. We should have like a buffet, a breakfast buffet, <laughs> brunch. <Only using> <laughs> yes, maybe that could be an episode. Oh, remember to text in and tweet in like suggestions of what kind of con um, concepts that you want, you want us to cover. So maybe, um, yeah. Should we have a brunch episode? <laughs> <laughs> should we make slime outside? That'd be cool. Or maybe a pumpkin explosion. I don't know. So tweet in and text us. Um, so perfect. And there's one more um, question from one of the viewers. Um, so are you going to do blubber tomorrow? Yes. So we are going to do the same experiment. So the demo with the shortening tomorrow. So make sure you get your materials ready for tomorrow. And it's going to be really, really fun. What we're going to focus on that episode is animal adaptation. So we're going to learn about what adaptation is and how animals survive in their environments. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Um, another question from one of our viewers is from Haley. Hello, Haley. Um, so Haley asks, Kat, what's the craziest thing that you s have seen um, when you were nursing? Have you seen some weird, crazy things in nursing? <laughs> Yes, all the time. Um, the craziest thing, I probably, it's um, not the greatest thing to share because it's a bit too crazy. But other than that, the craziest thing I've seen by far is watching a baby being born. It's super cool. Um, I definitely cried a little bit. <laughs> it is a wonderful experience to share with a family. Perfect. That's so great. Oh, I love that. Right. So thank you all for tuning in to today's episode. Remember, we're, we're airing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And we're going to be airing r tomorrow with a really, really cool activity called Polar Bear Jacket. So make sure that you check out our lab, um, our Couch Potato blog post with all the lab manuals and all the description there. So thank you all. Thank you to AXHA for supporting us, University of Regina, and to you, to you for joining us on our live stream. So thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, all. Bye. Bye.